This is KJ here, and we are going to go over 4.02, naming ionic compounds. So remember ionic compounds, you have a metal and non-metal chemically combined. The metal is the cation, which means it has a positive charge. It's always written first. The non-metal is the anion, a negative ion. It's always written second. And we're going to talk about naming them. So it's pretty easy for naming ionic compounds. You write the element's name, and then you write the second element's name, but you change the ending to IDE, and that's it. So let's practice. All right, let's look at our first example, M, G, and F. So M, G is down here. Let's make it into a chemical compound first. And so M, G is in group two. So what is its charge? Its charge is plus two because it's going to lose two electrons. F, fluorine, is in group 7A. It has seven valence electrons, so what's it going to do? It's going to gain one. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, oh, I just don't understand about these charges and if it's gain or losing, think about it like rounding. We want a total of eight, okay? We either want eight or we want to round down to zero. So that means if you have one, two, or three valence electrons, you're going to round down to zero or get rid of them. If you have five, six, or seven valence electrons, you're already there. You're going to round up and gain more electrons to get a total of eight. So fluorine's at seven. It's going to round up one more to get one more, which gives it a negative one overall charge. All right, so now it's going to look like they're going to switch places. So this two is going to end up going down here. And this one is going to end up going down here. And the reason why is magnesium, remember, wants to get rid of two electrons, whereas fluorine only wants to gain one. So how many fluorine atoms is it going to take to make that one magnesium happy? Well, it's going to take a total of two, right? Two fluorines so that the one electron can go here and the one electron can go there. So again, I showed you in the previous lesson about how you can draw that all out with Bohr's diagram. And so let's just go back to look at our original. We have magnesium, so that means this two goes down here. This one goes here. And we have M, G, one, F, two. Now, of course, if, because it's like a math class, if you want to just write MG without the one, you can do that as well. So MG F2. All right, now let's do the naming. So MG is what element? It is magnesium. And F is what element? It is fluorine. However, what do we need to do? We need to change the ending to be IDE. -E. So it's magnesium fluoride. And that's it. So we wrote the first name magnesium. We wrote the second name and we changed the ending to IDE -E or IDE. All right, here's our next pair. Let's do calcium and sulfur. So calcium is right here. It's in group two. So what is calcium's charge? Plus two. Sulfur is over here in group six. So it's going to round up two more to get to eight. So its charge is negative two. And now the charges switch places, basically. So this one goes down here. And this number goes down here. Now, if you notice, when we write them on the bottom as the subscripts, that tells how many atoms, so it's always a positive number. So it's Ca2S2. All right. Now, you can reduce this. Remember in math class, if you have 2x over 2y, you can reduce the twos and cross them off. It's the same thing. 
Same thing in chemistry, we can reduce them and just say C-A-S. All right, let's name that. So rule number one, write the name. So what's the name of C-A? Calcium. What's the name of S? Sulfur, but change the ending to I-B-E. Sulfide, that's it, calcium sulfide. All right, let's do the next one. K-O. All right, so K is here. K is in group one, and group one has one valence electron, so positive one. Oxygen is over here in group six, so we're going to round up to get to eight. We're going to add two more electrons, and they're negative, so we have minus two. And then they swap places, so this one goes down here. And this two goes down here. And what would our formula be? K2O. All right, let's name it. K is what? Potassium. O is oxygen, except we change it to oxide. All right. Now, I want to talk a little bit more about this positive negative thing again. Remember we said that this was positive 1 for a charge and oxygen was negative 2? Well, it works out so that the entire molecule is neutral because here we have two positive 1 charges, right? So that's plus 2. And if I look here, I have two negative charges, right? Because negative 2 times 1 minus 2, so 2 minus 2 equals 0. And I have an overall neutral compound. So it's kind of cool how that works out. All right, let's do another one. BN. So BN, B is over here. It's in group 3. And so its charge is positive 3. And I have nitrogen, which is right here, group 5. It's almost 8, so it's going to round up, and it's going to have a negative 3 charge. Now, remember, the positive one always gets written first. Always, 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 always. All right, so now they're going to switch. This 3 is going to go down here. And this 3 is going to go down here. And what would our formula be? would be B3 and 3, or we can reduce. What would it be if we reduced? It would be BN. All right, so let's name it. So write the first element, boron, and the second element, nitrogen, except we got to change the ending to I. Now you've tried. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, oh my goodness, how do I know exactly how much to pull off the end like nitrogen instead of nitride? I mean, fluorine, fluoride, that was easy. But I tried to pick the hardest ones like sulfur, sulfide, oxygen, oxide, nitrogen, nitride, okay? And these will be multiple choice on the quiz, so you don't have to worry about your spelling. You don't have to worry about making sure you have exactly the right letters on that. You just need to make sure that you know to change your ending to I-D-E. And again, that's for naming ionic compounds. All right, for the next part, we're gonna do this one a little bit backwards. So let's say I have magnesium chloride. Okay, and let's say you did not have a periodic table. Okay, let's say you do not have a periodic table in front of you. And I said, well, what's the charge of magnesium and what's the charge of chlorine? And if you know the formula, you can just say, well, I can work backwards. I know that I got this two because of what number was up there. So magnesium's charge is plus two. Now, again, we know that automatically because it's in group two. But if you didn't have a periodic table, you could do that. 
Well, there's not a number written next to magnesium. So if there's not a number written, what number do we know was supposed to go there? We know it should be a one. And so that tells us the charge of chlorine is one, but specifically negative one. Okay, now if you're like, okay, why do I need to know that? If I can always look on the periodic table. Well, now we are getting to doo -doo -doo -doo, the messy middle transition metals have multiple charges. What I mean by that, lithium is always plus one, sodium is always plus one, potassium is always plus one, beryllium is always plus two, magnesium is always plus two, calcium is always plus two. But when we get in the middle, like iron, Fe, we will find that you can have iron B plus two, but sometimes iron might be plus three, and you might even have iron plus six, okay? And the different transition metals each have different charges, which go up to six. They don't all go up to six, but just kind of wanted to show you an example here. So you can have multiple charges. So you have to know the charge of the specific atom that you're dealing with in order to properly make a formula. So for example, Let's say I have Fe2O3. Okay, let's work backwards. Let's work backwards, and I want you to tell me which one of these irons do I have. Do I have iron choice A, choice B, or choice C? Which one of them do I have up there? Well, let's work backwards. This two came from up here, and that's because oxygen has a negative two charge, which we know, because it's in group 6A. Now we can look at the iron, and we can say, all right, there's this three down here, so that three had to come from up here, and therefore, iron had to start out with a positive three charge, so I started out with choice B. So that's how you do the messy middle transition metals. And when you write the names, just so that you know, so that you've seen it, we actually take into account the fact that it had a plus three charge and they write it as Roman numerals. So it'd be iron three and not oxygen, but oxide. All right, let's do another one. All right, so let's look at cobalt F5. All right, so we need to know the charges, so let's work backwards. That means this five came from where? From up here. And is it positive or negative? Well, it was written first, and we always write the positive one first. And there's not a number by the cobalt. So remember, if there's not a number, then we know that it's supposed to be a one. And so fluorine is a negative one and we can double check because fluorine's over here. Yep, group seven, it's got to be, in fact, a negative one charge. So let's write it, cobalt, and then in parentheses, we put our charge. And we only have to do that if it's a messy middle transition metal. And then not, Floor green, but what? Fluoride. There we go. Now I do want to show you the one trick that you can find with these. TiO. You might first think, oh, positive one, negative one. But oxygen's always, 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 always negative two. So if you're like, wait a minute, then it should be Ti2. Oh, but then it would be O2 and then it reduced. So in this case, titanium would be plus two. So I just wanna make sure that whenever you have something that's in group one through seven A, make sure you always double check just in case that formula was reduced. So make sure you do your worksheet. I can't emphasize that enough. Check your answers, um, see me for help.